Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to be going over shielding and penetration and how this relates to the sublevel splitting. So let's get into this. So here I have a couple of total radial distribution diagrams here and basically what these diagrams show are the probability of finding the electron at a certain distance from the nucleus. So I'm not going to get into the deep quantum mechanics of this or how what exactly this means, but just know that these diagrams are referring to the probability of where you would find the electron at a certain distance from the nucleus. So here we have in this particular uh, diagram, we have the distance from the nucleus r for picometers and and we have the total radial probability. So the probability of where you would find the electron at a certain distance from the nucleus in picometers. So here I have the 1s orbital, the 2p orbital, and the 2s orbitals. So remember, the orbitals are just, it's just a probability map of where you would find the electron. And so this is kind of like your probability map. And so what you see right away is like, so for the 1s, the highest probability of finding the electron is somewhere in this area here between, you know, right in the middle, maybe 150 uh, picometers, somewhere around there. This is not drawn to scale. I tried my best, but should be somewhere, it's like less than 200 picometers. So this would be where you would find the electron, the highest probability of finding the electron here. Uh, if you're in the 1s orbital. If you're in the 2s orbital, then the thing to notice is that the 2, I'm sorry, the 2p orbital here, this is in blue, uh, you'll notice that to find the, the electron at the uh, distance from the nucleus is going to be around uh, a little more than two, uh, 200 picometers from the nucleus. And so the thing to see here is that the electron, the probability of finding the electron from the nucleus is higher here, which is farther from the nucleus compared to the 1s. So the 1s orbital is closer to the nucleus or electron in the 1s orbital is gonna be, uh, have a higher probability of being closer to the nucleus than say a 2p electron, right? And so <clears throat> when we uh, think about shielding, remember the shielding, the 1s electrons are closer to the nucleus and so they're going to shield the nucleus from higher energy uh, sublevels. Um, so here we have the 2s and the 2p. So because they're 2s and 2p, they're in the second energy level. So they're in that outer shell, which is uh, the second outer shell. And the 1s electrons are in that inner shell. So the 1s electrons are shielding the nucleus from the electrons in the 2p and the 2s. OK, so um, if that was the only story, then uh, uh, if that was the only thing we were going to consider with shielding, then we would expect that the uh, energy of the electrons would be somewhat the same or very similar. Um, however, what you'll notice here with the 2P and the 2S is that you'll notice the probability distribution is kind of like this bell curve here. So the highest probability is just this highest peak here at, like I said, somewhere around here in the distance. Uh, this is the distance from the nucleus. Uh, so the two P electrons are gonna be farther from the nucleus than the, uh, the one S. So remember we talked about the closer the electrons are to the nucleus, the lower the potential energy, if you remember from Coulomb's law. So we want, the, as the negative electrons get closer to the nucleus, that's going to be lower, uh, lower potential energy, and that's more favorable uh, for the electrons. So you'll see here that the 2p is uh, higher in energy. It's going to be farther away from the nucleus, so that those are going to be higher in energy compared to the 1s, which are going to be closer, more likely to be closer to the nucleus than the 2p. Now, look at the 2s now. So the 2s, notice that there's two peaks here. So we have a high probability of finding the 2s electron 
here from the nucleus, which is farther away than the P. But notice that we have this little peak here of probability. And so compared to the 2P, we have a higher probability here. We have this little peak here. So we have a probability of finding the electron here, which is closer to the nucleus than, say, the 2P. And that is what brings the energy down of the 2s orbital. So the 2s orbital ends up having a lower potential energy because of this penetration compared to the 2p, which doesn't have the penetration. So this is why the 2s orbital is lower in energy than the 2p. And it's because of this penetration of the electron. So the electron... Uh, can penetrate the shielding of the 2s. So the 2s is here, the, uh, 2, the, the 1s is here, the 2s electron can penetrate in closer to the nucleus and therefore uh, overcome some of that shielding of the 1s electrons. And so that is what brings down the energy of the, of the 2s compared to the 2p. And so in this uh, diagram, you can see the same thing. So here we're looking at the 3s, the 3p, and the 3d. So you'll see that the uh, 3s orbital is here, 3p, and the 3d. These are, these are the radial, uh, the total radial uh, probability diagrams for each of these orbitals. And again, you can see that for the 3d, You've got in red, you've got the total radial probability distribution here. So the peak of the 3D lies here. So it's farther from the nucleus. So again, this is going to be higher energy because it's farther from the nucleus. But then if you notice the 3P orbital or 3P diagram, right? So the total radial probability diagram for the 3P, you'll see that it's got this hump here which is farther from the nucleus, but then you've got this penetration here, which is much closer, has a higher probability closer to the nucleus than the 3D. So again, that's going to bring down the uh, potential energy for the 3P orbital or 3P electrons. So that sublevel is going to be lower in energy. And so then if you also look at the 3S, notice that the 3S has two peaks closer to the nucleus. So this peak here is penetrating the, uh, the shielding electrons. So we have shielding electrons from the second energy level and the first energy level. So those two energy levels, those electrons are shielding the, the electrons in the third energy level. But the 3S can penetrate much closer to the, to the nucleus and get closer to the nucleus, therefore lowering the probability compared to that, or lowering the energy, um, the potential energy compared to that of the, the 3P uh, orbital as well. So you can see here that the energies of the 3D, 3P, and 3S are going to be different based upon how close they can get to the nucleus. And so the closer they can get to the nucleus, the more they can penetrate that shielding and get close to the nucleus, that's going to allow them to have lower energy. And so that explains why in the orbital diagram we see the sublevels of the different uh, energy levels being split apart. If there was only one electron in the atom, then these sublevels of the different levels would be the same. So the 2p should be at the same level as the 2s. So these two sublevels would be at the same energy level. The three sublevels, the 3s, 3p, and 3d, would also be in the same energy level. But when we start adding electrons, more electrons to the atom, we get this penetration effect. And so this is what causes the uh, sublevel splitting. We call this sublevel splitting. So the 2s orbital is going to have a lower energy than the 2p because the 2s has that penetrating power through the shielding electrons, the shielding effect of the electrons, and then therefore can lower the potential energy. 
And here you see the 3S, the 3P, and 3D. The 3D is higher in energy because it doesn't really have that penetrating power. The 3P, as we see here in green, has penetrating power more than the 3D, so it's going to have lower energy. And then the 3S has that penetrating power closer to the nucleus compared to the 3P. So the 3S ends up having lower energy compared to the 3P, and the 3P is lower than the 3D. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that's an explanation of shielding penetration and how that relates to sublevel splitting. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was interesting. I hope you learned something. If you did, if you like this video, please smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell so you can be notified by other videos I put out. Put a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think and if you have any questions that I can answer. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.